Hello Church, it's Pastor Steve here with our Monday Minute for June the 6th of 2022. Got a couple of uh, things I just want to highlight for you here before we get into uh, into uh, what we're going to talk about today. Uh, and a couple of those things are, one, uh, Reverend Gasway and myself and Rob and Sarah Much are lay members to the Michigan Annual Conference, are back after uh, participating that in the last week. Just a few things to note that among the things that we adopted as a conference was supporting candidates and legislation that will help us all curb the gun violence that has uh, continued to spiral out of control just in these last couple of weeks, but also have needed to be addressed. And there'll be more information available for that on our conference website, and we'll make it available as soon as we are able to also. Another resolution that was passed is a uh, opportunity for us to support a program called Readers to Leaders. And the goal of this program is to raise $600 per church to help with literacy education for our covenant partners in Liberia and also for our Children's Defense Fund here in the Michigan Conference. You're going to also be hearing more about those in the upcoming weeks. Of course, I also want to encourage everyone to uh, join us this Sunday for my last sermon here at Newburgh and for our reception from Sunday to 4 to 7 p.m. here in Guthrie Hall. So probably you've gathered now that this is my last Monday Minute with you all here at Newburgh. The Monday Minute started in 2020, just a little over two years ago, as a way to keep people informed and a devotion to start the week during the pandemic when there was so much uncertainty that is going on. Since then, it has evolved in a lot of ways, and it's taken on a life of its own. And I hope we'll continue to see the Monday Minute evolve with your new pastor and with our staff who are more than capable of doing those things as well. It's, uh, again, one of these things that we probably needed to do before the pandemic, but that made the need for us very clear. And we're glad that you're still tuning in with us this day. As some of you have counted, that you get more out of this to start your week than you might even get on a Sunday morning. I'll take that as a compliment, and hopefully it will continue to compliment everyone moving from there. We have a great staff here at Newburgh that helps to make all of this happen. And I want to express my thanks and support to all of them as they continue to do their jobs and continue to go above and beyond for making disciples, especially in this new era. One of the things that we are called to do as followers of Jesus is to give thanks in all things. Now, this is a weird time to be giving thanks when there is so much turmoil going on in the world. We're under a major transition here at uh, Newburgh Church, and I'm under a major transition as I'm moving to a new church as well and to a new home. But it is still our opportunity to give thanks, to look back and to give thanks for what we have accomplished here, but also for the future that is promised to us from God if we remain faithful to our mission of reaching out to our community, making disciples of Jesus Christ and recognizing Christ in everyone. That will continue no matter who your pastor is, and I hope that all of you will continue in that ministry and support Chad as he comes in to lead Newburgh through the next phase of their ministry in this community. The Apostle Paul says in his first letter to the Thessalonians in uh, the fifth chapter that we appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and have charge of you in the Lord and admonish you. Esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves, and we urge you, beloved, to admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Let's continue to give thanks in all circumstances. But let us also rise up to the standard that Paul is giving us here. To encourage those who are faint-hearted that we might help the weak and admonish those who are repaying evil or think they are repaying evil for evil and help us to be on the right spiritual path. 
I am more than fully confident that Newburgh, which has been around since 1834, will continue to spread that legacy of the good news of Jesus Christ in all of these ways that the Apostle mentions and even more. And I, for one, have been glad to be a part of that journey for nine years as your pastor. And I also am looking forward to a new future and a new church, just as Paul would also go to the churches that he have founded to continue to bless that community and to be the ones who proclaim Christ in all people. I'll be praying for you, and I hope you'll be praying for me and my family as we all embark on these next steps and these journeys together. Blessings to all of you as Newburgh will continue to do good, I am sure, and recognize Christ in all people. That's it for this week, and in fact, that is it for me. So next week, I will not be back for another edition of the Monday Minute. However, one of our capable staff will be here in these next couple weeks to continue on this tradition and to help others to continue to connect and to stay informed. Until then, my heartfelt blessings to all of you. Continue to fight that good fight. And while, as I heard at our annual conference, we don't ever say goodbye, we just say we will see you again sometime. I will see you again sometime, if not at the great banquet that God will call all of us to, as we have that promise in Jesus Christ. Have a great week. We'll look forward to seeing you next Sunday as we celebrate and then as we prepare for the next phase in Newbert's ministry. God bless.